Praise the Lord. Rise up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we bless your name because you are preparing us so that we can go out to the highways and the edges and search for your people for you. Lord, we pray the heart to do it, the passion to do it, the love to do it, the faith to do it effectively. Grant every one of us in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray because you've anointed us already, appointed us already, equipped us already, energized us already. We pray, Lord, we'll do it effectively in Jesus' name. Once again, we pray as we come to open the pages of the scripture. And we look at this seemingly familiar passage that you'll speak to every heart in Jesus' name. Give us the passion of the real minister. That we will do the work you have called us to do and do it effectively. We glorify your name, Lord. We pray that as a result of our ministry, your church will be edified. The world will be evangelized. And we will be blessed. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts, chapter 26. Now, Paul the Apostle had presented the message. And then he had called for a decision. And he wanted a verdict. He wanted a response to what he had said. He had said in verse 27, King Agrippa. Believest thou the prophets? And then without waiting for him to answer yes or no, he said, I know that thou believest. And now Agrippa must let out himself. He must take his own decision. And he must be able to voice out and to say whether he believed or not. And if he believed, to what level did he believe? So he replied in verse 28, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuaded me, persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God. I desire seriously. This is my passion. I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost as well as all together almost and all together such as i am except these bonds here we find the passion of a minister the passion of an evangelist the passion of a preacher the passion of a commissioned messenger of the lord the passion of somebody who has the gospel and he knows that this is the only way, the only way to life, the only way to salvation, the only way to heaven, the only way to glory. And because of that, he said, Agrippa, you are only almost persuaded how I wish, how I desire. If I could do it and grab you by the soul, by the spirit, and drag you into the kingdom, I would to God that not only you, King Agrippa, with Festus and the rest of the people hearing me, and the soldier here that is changed unto me, and everybody that will ever hear my voice, how I would, I wish that all of you all together will be almost as well as all together such as i am a committed christian a convicted christian a courageous christian a consecrated christian that lays everything on the altar for the lord we're looking at the minister's passion for the total transformation not only of king agrippa not only of festus but total transformation of all and let's see this passion in paul the apostle the way he breathed with the passion he lived with the passion he served with the passion he labored with the with the passion in galatians chapter 4 verse 19 
Galatians 4 verse 19 my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you he said I'm traveling it's like I'm in labor pains because I, I don't want you to I don't want to see you just a kind of half big converts a kind of almost persuaded Christian I want to see the change the transformation that is complete and total and I travail again for you until Christ in his fullness in his glory be formed again in you you can see the passion of that minister there in 2nd Corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 15 and I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Think about that. I will gladly spend and be spent for you. He had spent some time in a Corinthian church. And he had got a lot of them to understand who Christ is. Our Savior. Our Sanctifier. Our Righteousness. Our Redeemer. Our Redemption. And then he had also got them to understand the gifts of the Spirit. And he said, you are not behind any other church. But he began to see that their transformation was not total. Their conversion still had some kind of impurities in it. And now he desired that that total transformation, perfection, purity will be realized in them. And so he said, I will gladly, I will gladly spend and be spent. That is to spend every drop of blood that I have. So that the change of the new creature and the perfection of the new life. And the life that a child of God ought to live. Totally committed, consecrated, submissive, subjected to the rule and the will and the word of the Lord. I will see it in you. That's why I said, I will gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Now you can see that uh, preachers of those days of the early time, uh, they were not a kind of passive uh, preachers and lazy preachers and lukewarm preachers and whatever they see is what they accept. If the people are changed at least a little bit, almost transformed, almost becoming new creatures, then they are satisfied. No. Not the New Testament apostles or the New Testament preachers or the New Testament pastors. They want a total, complete transformation. And that's what we're going to have. I said that's what we're going to have. Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, we see his passion coming through. We see the fire burning hot. And we see the desire expressed in a very serious way. And we see the label of his hand. And the goal and the purpose of that labor and passion. In Colossians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 28. Whom we preach. One in every man. And teaching every man. In all wisdom that we may present every man how. Perfect in Christ Jesus. And can I tell you something? There are preachers... When he started the ministry, their goal, their intention was to see this transformation. Their goal, their intention was to see the fire burning. They didn't want any lukewarmness. They didn't want any coldness. They didn't want any lethargy. They didn't want any insensitivity to the word. Whenever they preached in those early days, what they wanted, what they desired, and what they wanted to present to the Lord is that everyone that listened to them will be saved, thoroughly saved, sanctified, entirely sanctified, committed, consecrated, entirely consecrated, and sold to the Lord. But later in life, as they look at their congregation, 
And it is that the congregation, you know, people are getting married, people are getting responsibilities, and people are having children, and people have to go to work, and people have to get a lot of other things done. And you see that the perfection, the holiness, the sanctification, the total transformation, the desired earlier in ministry, they see that it's not forthcoming. Then they just they sit back and they say, what are we going to do? What am I going to do? If I do not flow of the stream, I'll be having a lot of kind of exertion within. I'll be having conflicts within. I'll be having this passion. And the zeal will eat me up. And it looks like it's never going to be realized. They begin to lose their faith in the blood of Jesus. They begin to lose their faith and their confidence in the power of the Spirit. They begin to lose their faith in the possibility of becoming sanctified and holy and transformed and entirely perfect. And so they now flow with the stream. They said, this is the level the people are. Instead of staying there to pull them out of the valley where they are, they come to the valley with them and preach a kind of a lifeless message. The thing that cannot change any life because now they accept. They accept. They start to squirm. And they say, that is what people are and there is nothing that will change they lose their faith in the possibility of the power of the almighty god to transform a man a woman completely but paul the apostle said no i will not come down to the level of the people i will stay up there and still keep on giving out the clarion call and telling the people here is the goal. Here is the purpose. And here is what she do. And therefore we preach him. And we warn every man. And we teach every man in all wisdom. That we may present. How many people? Every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That's the kind of passion the Lord wants us to maintain. That you keep on that same passion. That same persuasion, that same fire, that same commitment, that same understanding. Never, never, never lower your expectation to the level at which the people are. You must demand, you must desire, and you must wait until it is done. You keep on preaching so that the total transformation that Jesus Christ died for to provide for the people it will happen I said it will happen now if we all keep quiet if we all if we all get silent and if we, all the churches will say since that's what the people are looking for and since this is the level of the people and we all keep quiet and then just adjust to the level of the people how is it? How are we going to move forward and have what Jesus Christ died for? In Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. The passion of the minister desiring total transformation of all people. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 12, Epaphras is one of you, a servant of Christ, salutes you, always laboring hard fervently for you in prayers that she may stand how perfect that she may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God you know that does, those ministers appointed of the Lord and anointed of the Lord commissioned by the Lord called by the Lord that's all they wanted and they were not just in the ministry and to accept whatever the people wanted and you know there are people that come to church if you allow them and if you allow them to stay with their two wives and never talk about that and you say well they count it very strange and very difficult but they want to come to church but they don't want any change in their lives and they do not want any transformation they do not want any perfection so what will we do and if we talk too much about you they might go to another church therefore let's be silent and quiet about that. no laboring fervently until that transformation and perfection is reproduced in their lives by the power of the Lord it will be done 
I said it will be done. And then in Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 1. The passion, the passion of a minister that deserves total transformation from the people he's speaking to. In Romans chapter 9, verse 1, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed for Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. He said, I'll give anything. I'll surrender anything. I'll sacrifice anything. I'll offer anything, even to my very soul if I could, that the total transformation and the real conversion that Jesus Christ died for to, pro to purchase and provide for the people will be theirs. I'll give anything to see it happen. And that's the passion we ought to have. We're not called just to preach. We're not called just to minister. We're not called just to play religion. We're not called just to, you know, just, just to leave the people where they are. It is to preach for a purpose. It is to preach for a decision. It's to preach in such a way that the people know that this is what God expects of them. And this is the possibility it will be done. And this is how the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus, will wash them and cleanse them and make them whiter than snow. And they begin to desire it. And they begin to pray for it. And they pray until it is realized. And that was the passion of those preachers of old. By the grace of God, that is still our passion. And it will be done. I said it will be done. If we'll preach it. If you'll pray for it. And if we'll pursue it with all our energy. If you make it the goal, the dream, the pursuit, the desire, and the goal. Every time you preach that this word will make an impact in the lives of the people and will turn them around, will transform them, will change them. If that change, if that transformation, if that cleansing from within, if that purity of heart and life, if that holiness, if that sanctification is your desire when you preach, and you're not just preaching to preach, but if that is the goal of your ministry, then it will be done. In Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that what? They might be saved if your desire is to get them away from religion unto righteousness. And your desire is to get them away from their tradition, denominational tradition, and bring them unto a very definite transformation of life and character. Then it will be done. But if you didn't think about that transformation, you are not thinking about the things they need to do. How they need to call upon the Lord and be washed and be cleansed and be purged and be purified in the blood of the lamb and then you just preach a kind of message that the people are going to sleep even while you're preaching and then after the preaching in the name of the father and the son the holy ghost amen have a nice day and go back home and the people just come from sunday to sunday week to week and there's no change what kind of church will that be the passion will come to your heart today the fire will come to your soul today. And every time you see a sinner, the only dream, the only goal, the only desire, the only pursuit you have is that they will be changed. I said they will be changed. The minister's passion for the total transformation of everyone, of all. Welcome back to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts, chapter 26. I'm reading there from verse 28. And verse 29. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would you God, that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost and all together such as I am, except these Bonds. I'm going to divide the message to how many parts now? Always three. One, two, three. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the indecision and procrastination of the almost persuaded. When somebody is almost persuaded, he has problem with decision, indecision. 
the indecision and procrastination delay pushing it forward i'll do it another time i'll think about it i'll take decision another time procrastination of the almost persuaded number two the intensity and the passion of the altogether persuaded the intensity and the passion of the altogether persuaded number three the inflexibility and perseverance of the appointed preacher the inflexibility and perseverance of the appointed preacher when somebody is appointed by the lord anointed by the lord inflexibility is inflexible you couldn't turn him around from that conviction that why jesus christ died is so that people will be saved you couldn't take him away from the platform of righteousness and make him to sit on the plateau of religion no he will want that transformation in it in the lives of the people and it will be inflexible about it it'll be persevering about it the inflexibility and perseverance of the appointed preacher i'm coming to number one what's number one the indecision and the procrastination of the almost persuaded or the almost persuaded chapter 26 verse 28 almost thou persuadest me to be a christian just almost Do you know there are people like that they halt between two opinions they're never able to make up their minds they see the handwriting on the wall they might shake they might tremble they might be under conviction they might even cry and they might try to alter and mortar some promises before god but all the same they're not all together persuaded they are only almost 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 persuaded in first kings chapter 18 verse 21 first kings chapter 18 verse 21 the children of israel this time under the ministry of elijah and under the royal under the royalty of ahab they had been going through farming for about three and a half years and they had done everything that could be done and there was no solution and there was no plenty that came for them there was no dew and there was no rain and then elijah came to them are you persuaded now fully persuaded wholeheartedly persuaded all together persuaded that sin brings suffering are you wholly persuaded that Baal cannot save are you wholeheartedly all together persuaded that the god of heaven jehovah the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob is the only god we need to serve are you wholly persuaded that you need to turn away totally from all idols of all the nations surrounding you and then you put your confidence your heart your life and you put it on the altar for the almighty god in first kings chapter 18 verse 21 and elijah came unto all the people and said how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, what? Not a word, undecided. The indecision of the almost persuaded. They suffered for three and a half years. That alone should drive them to their knees. And they have had uh, the farming that the Lord had said. That if the people, if they forsake me, I will seal up heaven. And their heavens will be like brass. There will be no dew. There will be no rain. And then we thought, I thought that suffering for three and a half years should drive them to the Lord. But no, they were still undecided. How long are you going to halt between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. We're looking at Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1. In Ruth chapter 1, now me have spoken to both upper and Ruth. 
And now me had already introduced the God of Israel and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob unto you. We know that from the testimony of Ruth. And now he told, he told, she told them, and she said, I'm going back home. I'm going back to the land of promise. I'm going back to the God of Israel. I'm going back to the way that I left before, which has brought all this calamity upon me. And then let's see their attitude, Ruth, chapter 1, verse 8. And now he said unto our two daughters in law, Go return each to our mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each one of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And he said unto he, unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And there was a kind of a flicker of light, a spark of light, of fire within them. And that seems to say, and we know that your God is the God we ought to serve. And we know that your people are the people we need to fellowship with. And we know that the land where you're going is the place where to go. And we're going with you. Then she told them, now count the cost. Let me know whether you're only almost persuaded. Or whether you're completely altogether persuaded. That's what she began to tell them. And Naomi said in verse 11, turn again. My daughters... Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say, I have hope, and if I should have an husband also tonight, should and should also be as sons. Would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and all Pakis, the mother in law, but rose clave unto her. Upper was undecided. You know, sometimes you have to bring in the test, the pressure, the heat, and you have to apply the hammer, and then you will know who is fully persuaded, who is altogether persuaded, or who is only almost persuaded. And we find that Upper, in this case, was not totally persuaded. She felt if the cost is like that, the price you have to pay is that much. I think I better reconsider my stand. And she reconsidered her stand. And then she went back. You will not go back. But you know, eh, there are people that they appear to be running, and they appear to be very zealous, and they appear to be fiery. But when the cost stares them in the face, it may be at the time of marriage that they now realize this is the standard of the watch of God. Then all, all of a sudden you find the people you thought were really following after the Lord. Then they turn back. They were only almost persuaded. It may be that you know you have married and the children are still to come and they are coming. I said they are coming. But it may be like in the case of Sarah, in the case of Anna, in the case of Elizabeth, in the case of Rachel, in the case of Rebecca. It may be that they delayed a little. And because of that delay, you will know, you will tell your attitude. Whether you are almost persuaded, altogether persuaded. It may be for persecution. That's sometimes a little persecution. That the Lord, the Lord is holding them, those persecutors. is limiting them. But he allows them a little to bring the persecution. And then when you see that persecution, then you will know the people that are altogether completely fully persuaded or the people that are only almost persuaded and you find up here she was only almost persuaded i pray that in our own case we'll be fully persuaded i said fully persuaded acts of the apostles chapter 24 verse 24 acts chapter 24 and we're reading from verse 24 in verse 24 here is what it says and after certain days 
when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, that is a Jewish woman. He sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. He himself said, he said, I've been hearing about this Christ and the faith in Christ. And let me hear each more uh, from the Aussie's mouth. Let me hear from the ring leader. Let, him, let me hear from the champion preacher. And now he sent for Paul the apostle. I want to hear. I want to learn. I want to see the very depth of the faith. The faith that leads us to that life eternal. The desire was there. He knew there was an emptiness in the heart. There was a vacuum in the heart. That only God at the point of salvation can feel. There was a dissatisfaction in his heart. That he knew, if I can hear about this faith in Christ, let me see whether this vacuum in my heart. Whether this loneliness in my life. And whether this emptiness I feel will be filled up. And so he sent for Paul the apostle. And they were told in verse 25. Verse 20, before I read verse 25. What if uh, somebody sent for you? A governor sent to you. A king sent to you. A president sent to you. A director sent to you. And he said, please, I've been hearing about this, uh, you know, deeper life, deeper life. And, uh, you know, some of my workers and ministers and the cabinet, they have been telling me that hey, there seems to be something different about your church, about your people. And I, I, I want to know about this. What if you are called? by somebody so high like that and he says i want to know would you please tell me this emptiness i feel in my heart and this vacuum i feel in my heart and this loneliness i feel in my heart with all the position all the place everything i've got and yet i still feel there is something missing i'm asking you now the question what will you tell him it's highly placed it's high and he also he calls the short if you say something nasty, he could uh, kind of tell his security people out of it to go and lock you up. What would you have said? This tells us the conviction of Paul the Apostle. The conviction of Paul the Apostle. That he wasn't going to trade the chance, the privilege, and the position of telling the gospel, the whole truth, even though he was with a man that could either leave him bound or even release him. Let me read it to you. In verse 25, and as he reasoned of righteousness and temperance and judgment to come, Felix did what? He trembled. Felix trembled. Felix trembled. Felix trembled. And answered, go thy way this time. When I have convenient season, I will call for thee. He trembled. What was he converted? He had the gospel. Was he converted? Be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. And understand, you need to have passion for the total transformation of the people. Your passion, your desire, your goal will tell the presentation of the message. And then when you say go this time, look at verse 26. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul so that he could release Paul, bribery and corruption. That he might do what? Again? Again? Did Paul give a bribe? I said, did Paul give a bribe? He was not just being delayed by the roadside for 30 minutes. He was not just being delayed in a place for one hour. It wasn't that they didn't want to register his company. And they are delaying the registration of his company for only one month. That he, that he didn't give the bribe. It was, he was in bonds. In, in imprisonment. And the chains were in his hand. And was changed to another soldier. And the king or the governor called for him. And he said, tell me about the faith. And the one that has the final say, so to say, to release him or to leave him bound, asked him to come and preach to him. And he didn't compromise the message because of that. He still kept the message. That's how you know a person that is altogether persuaded. A person that will not become so cheap, 
so fearful that it will tone down the message because huh, I need something from that office. They are the people to register my company. And they say, policeman, if I give him a track, then I'm in trouble because he's asking for my particulars and I know what he's wanting and he keeps me there for 30 minutes for one hour and he says ah Mr. Man what's, the, what's wrong with you you don't have any, any other thing to do you don't have anything to anywhere to go today oh you say yes I have a place to go don't you know what you ought to do I've shown you my papers papers economy is going down paper Salary, don't you read papers, newspapers? The salary is not in our papers. Show me documents. Okay, give me your document now. Let me take it home and give my wife and go and pay school fees for my children with your document. Document. You know what you want? What do you want? Ah, you say, okay, stay there. And some people cannot stay there for five minutes. Their salvation is not worth five minutes stay. Their conversion is not worth one hour delay. But in the case of Paul the Apostle, the conversion he had, the persuasion he had, and the sin, the conviction within him, he said, the chains are here. And it's going to disturb him from going here and going there and going there. Some people will use the excuse and say, to release myself so that I can go and preach. Okay, what do you want? It's your, I'm not the one giving you, are the one demanding it. They are, what do you want? This is what you want. Okay, Felix, take what you want. And then, what will he think about what you are preaching? You are talking of righteousness. Where is the righteousness? You are talking of judgment to come. Where is the judgment to come? You are talking of temperance. Where is it? Prove what you say you believe. And it is when you prove it. And you stand. And you know that this is the way. And this is the world. And you are not going to compromise. Even if it brings suffering. That's when we know that you have conviction. We well, have that conviction. It says, and he hoped also that money should be given him or Paul, and that he might lose him. Wherefore he sent for him the offner very often and communed with him. And after how many years? You see that? Paul the apostle said, That's how you know a person who is fully who is fully persuaded. We are all together persuaded. Somebody will not say after one month, after two months, after three months. <laughs> looks like I'm staying here more than I thought. They're keeping me in this place more than I thought. And I don't have the contacts and the long leg to be able to solve this problem. I think I better do something. There's nothing else to do. Our time belongs to the Lord. Our lives belong to the And the Lord knows I'm there. The Lord knows you are there. And if he keeps you there for two years, the will of the Lord be done. I said the will of the Lord be done. That means that you are really persuaded, fully persuaded. But this man, he wasn't fully persuaded. He was only almost persuaded. Have you heard about that? Almost persuaded now to believe. Almost persuaded Christ to receive. Seems some. Some soul to say. Go, spirit, go thy way. Paul, I'll call for you another time. Go as sat now. Go, spirit, go thy way. Some more convenient day on thee I'll call. That man was never converted, almost persuaded. Why don't you come? Come, come today. Almost persuaded to not away. Jesus invites you here. Angels are lingering near. Prayers rise from heart so dear. Oh, wonder, oh, sinner, come. Almost persuaded, harvest is past. Almost persuaded, doom comes at last. Almost cannot avail. Almost is, but shall fail. Sad, sad, the bitter wail. Almost, but lost. To be almost persuaded is not to get saved. To be almost persuaded is to be lost. But for you to say, I will not just be almost persuaded. My heart, my life, my mind, my soul, everything I've got, I bring to the altar. I am 
all together persuaded i'll follow the lord you'll follow the lord in jesus name point number two the intensity and the passion the intensity and the passion of the all together persuaded acts chapter 26 i'm reading from verse 29 acts chapter 26 verse 29 and paul said i would to god that not only thou but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together both almost and all together both almost and all together such as i am except these bonds you know agrippa i'm praying for you that you will not just be almost persuaded you'll be all together persuaded only that i don't wish you to have the persecution i have i don't want you to have the pressure the pain that i have except these bonds but as for my character being totally transformed i want that for you as for me laying my life on the altar of sacrifice for the glory of god i want that for you i want to you to be both almost and all together persuaded who oh, are those people all together persuaded i read ruth chapter one i'm going back to ruth chapter one now and we're going to read the rest of that part that we are reading Ruth chapter 1 and we are reading now from verse 15 in verse 15 and she said behold the sister-in-law is gone back unto our people and unto our gods return thou after thy sister-in-law you are going to find in life that the people that should encourage you God can permit them to seemingly discourage you like Elijah talking to Elisha, stay here, the Lord has called me to Gilgal. Like he says, stay here, the Lord has called me to Bethel. And stay here, the Lord has called me to Jericho. And then Elisha said, as your soul liveth, and as the Lord liveth, I will not leave thee. And then they went both together until the power, the fire, the Holy Ghost came upon him in the measure of the double anointing that was on Elijah. There are people that God can allow them to speak to you that will say, why don't you stay back? And what have I got to do with you? Now me said unto Ruth, go back. Don't, don't you want an husband? Go back. Don't you want an easy life? Go back. And see your sister-in-law, Opa, she is gone back. Why will you follow me? Some things may happen that you'll say, you know, I really wanted to serve the Lord. I really want to give my all. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. Except that the people I expected will encourage me. And the people I expected will move me on. They are the people that are trying to drag me back as a test on your faith. Whether you're all together persuaded or almost persuaded praise the lord i am altogether persuaded i said i'm altogether persuaded and now let's look at ruth and ruth said entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee for we that thou goest i will go and we that thou lodgest i will lodge thy people shall be my people and thy god my god God, where thou diest, there will I die, and there will I be buried. And the Lord do so to me, and more so if aught but death part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, she left speaking unto her, and they went together. You will go together. You'll be for Christ, you'll live in Christ, and nothing will turn you back in Jesus' name. That's an all together persuaded believer i'm asking you a question now uh, how do you know an all together persuaded convert all together persuaded convert he says he's giving his life to the lord and he's all together persuaded as a convert how do you know him is is through of sin he says sin bye bye it's through with all the gangs and all the friends of the past he says bye bye it's through with all the things he used to do from which he used to get some gain but the unlawful gain he says bye bye the old girlfriend and the old boyfriend bye bye and all the people that will put him back into sin he says bye bye and all together persuaded converts 
How do you know an altogether persuaded an evangelist? And you know, we have a lot of evangelists and sit back and think. And while you hear them preach, while you hear them make altar call, and while you hear them say all the things they say, to those people they are calling, come forward, come forward, raise up your hand. Ask yourself, is this an altogether persuaded evangelist? Does he believe that Jesus came to die for our sins? Is he altogether persuaded that Jesus Christ is the only Savior? Does he really believe that we must be saved from sin to get to heaven? This evangelist preaching here, and this person making this altar call, and this person that is making the people to laugh, and then they are rejoicing, they are excited, and they are dancing, and he's saying, Jesus is good, and Jesus is merciful, and Jesus is wonderful. How many of you believe Jesus is wonderful? Wave your hand at me. Praise the Lord, you are saved. No repentance. Is this evangelist? And all together persuaded evangelists. This person here that is preaching. And the Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Is this man persuaded? All together persuaded. And that's what, what, that's what you need to find out. It's not just that somebody is preaching. It's not just that somebody is carrying the Bible. It's not just that somebody is spending millions of dollars on Naira. And then he's talking to people. Come, come, come. You see an all together persuaded evangelist. Is this man here, pastor in a church? You see an all together together persuaded pastor that what he's preaching you see all together persuaded about it when some of the members of the church want to say ah, pastor if you stay on that nobody is going to cooperate with you you see persuaded does he have conviction does he know that this is the truth on all trouble unchangeable infallible and irreplaceable that this must be in the lives of the people he's preaching to you see all together persuaded you know pastors who are not all together persuaded once there's a little resistance from their members the members of their churches they're going to say oh members what's the problem now I'm a peace loving pastor and I didn't mean to hurt anybody okay if uh, what was said about not going to marry unbeliever and then you go to that denomination that place to go and have a woman if that's what is going to break us apart do whatever you want to do and you marriage committee don't tell me anything anything the people is between you and them whatever they want to do be a father to them and love them and give them what they want to have. this is our church that is so peaceful here we don't want anything to disorganize us therefore don't tell me anything about marriage committee and i leave it in your hand it's your business now whatever you do i'll just be praying for you is that man altogether persuaded and then you find these young people bringing unbelievers into the church and those unbelievers they bring they're joining the workforce and their workers and the pastor is still just praise the lord this is our church and the church is great is this pastor all together persuaded and from the campus said they reported you are a pastor and then they reported your child to you they reported your daughter to you and he said uh, pastor your daughter on the campus is a kind of is doing some things uh, it will shock you if you if you see what your daughter is doing she is uh, going this way and going this way and going that way and then after i say okay i understand don't don't uh, spoil my family i'll take care of my daughter are you fully persuaded are you all together persuaded that if your daughter continues like that, that she will perish? Do you believe the word of God that except a man, except a woman, except a boy, except a girl, be born again? He cannot see the kingdom of God. And then eventually you will call your daughter. I hear that, uh, you know, things are going on on your campus. Be very careful. You know, all these campus people, you know, I'm a pastor. Don't let my information get to our region overseer, to our state overseer, because just whatever you practice, do it with wisdom so that they will not be telling tales and talking about you. If that's the way you talk to your daughter, to protect evil. And you cannot call your daughter and say, Here, come. I hear reports about you. 
And I want to tell you, the soul that seen it, it shall die. Be a pastor in your family. Be a pastor to your children. If you are all together persuaded that sin ruins the soul and destroys the life, your boy has been reported to you. That your boy is doing evil. That your boy will be in the nightclub. That your boy will be one of those, you know, campus ladies. That because it's the ladies now that are chasing and running after the boys. And then they know that your son is, uh, you know, the son of a pastor. And these girls are running after him and your son is, is into that. And your son never attends the campus fellowship. And then our people on the campus, they said, Pastor, you know something is happening? Your son, we run after him, we can't catch him. And we tell him, this is campus fellowship for deeper life. Your daddy, your mommy, they are workers, they are leaders in deeper life. Come here. And your son is not listening to us. And then when they tell you like that, how do you react? How do you, react? How do you respond? Do you call your son? And if your son is saying, no, daddy, they are telling lies against me. Eli said, no. The report I'm hearing about you is not like that. If anybody falls into the hand of the almighty God, who will deliver him? Even with all the warning he gave, God still condemned him. Because he didn't do the right thing. When your son is reported to you, what, how do you react? Are you a fully persuaded all together persuaded pastor that you say here is the way and then you take that boy you take him and hand him over to the campus coordinator there and say this child while he's here is your child is your son whatever you will do to your own child you want to kill him i give you the fun. in the presence of that son and anything he does let me know about it and you put some fear and you put some understanding in your child, making your child, you know, my boy, you understand, whatever certificate you get out of here is nothing to me. I want you to get to heaven because I'm a fully persuaded pastor that Jesus Christ can come at any time. And because Jesus Christ can come at any time, I don't want any in my family to me to miss when we gather up there. Therefore, my son, shape up and get saved. Your son will shape all, but you know, if you are covering your son, you are not an altogether persuaded pastor, not an altogether persuaded evangelist, and then your son will be hiding under the cover that my daddy will never believe any story they tell about me. Mommy will never believe any story they tell about me. You are the one sending your children uh, to the other direction. Are you a fully persuaded, altogether persuaded parent? A parent that is fully persuaded, all together persuaded. Do you believe that a child of God shall not marry an unbeliever? Do you believe that with all your heart or your soul? Are you all together persuaded that this is the way? Walk ye therein, and then your child comes. Um, your child is still claiming to be born again. Still claiming to be a child of God. And you say, Mommy, I wanted to tell you something, but I saw you are not well disposed to listen to me. But the way we are talking now, I'm guessing you are willing to listen. Mommy, will you listen? Tell me yes. And then, uh, this thing I want to tell you, will you agree with me? Tell me first. When you tell me, then I will know whether I can agree or not. Mommy, don't talk like that now. I thought, you know, I'm your daughter. If I cannot confide in you, who else will I confide in? Mommy, tell me yes. And then, okay, what is it? I've seen the person I'm going to marry. Hmm. Where? Where? From the campus, from the church, they call you in the marriage committee. Mommy, you know, to tell you my mind, I can never marry from deeper life. We stop the conversation there. We stop right there. I didn't bring you into the world just to get happy. I didn't bring you to the world just to get married. I brought you into the world 
as a transitional process. This place is a transition. I'm taking you to heaven and I never will live to see you going to a home I don't know about. If you're going to take a decision and you're going to carry me along as your mother, I must know where you're going. I must know that man. And I don't care. You say you get pregnant. I'm telling you with that pregnancy. Get the baby and throw the baby to the man. You are my daughter. I keep. You are not going to marry that man. You are not going to use any method. Pregnancy or whatever. To be able to then give yourself as a cheap beast animal. A sacrifice to the other church there where they're not preaching the truth. Here is where I know. I don't know what's taking place in all those other places. A fully persuaded and altogether persuaded parent. You know what parents do today? The girl says, I'm pregnant now. Were you pregnant for? Well, uh, mommy you know this man I know that you will not understand but he is from the white garment church and I'm pregnant already and you know mommy it's not good for any woman you're a woman too mommy don't you understand it's not good for a woman have a child here have a child here have a child here I want to have all my children only with one man or the white garment man and then through that road you go to hell not here but you know some parents they are not all together persuaded and then they will say okay then the man will come and will prostrate will prostration give us salvation and then after the prostration I say it's a mistake mistake on my child I prayed before the child was born and I said my fingernails will not miss heaven my hair will not miss heaven any part of me will not miss heaven not to talk of my whole daughter and my son missing heaven and then with my permission to give that child to somebody that will lead him to hell I will not agree with that marriage. And then you can sit down and say you are taking dowry from somebody that you do not know whether he will lead your child to heaven or hell. You are not an altogether persuaded believer. If you are a parent and you are altogether persuaded and you know this is the only way that leads to heaven and you have chosen that way and you are going to get to that heaven you will not allow them to just take your daughter away like that so easily from today we are going to be persuaded marriage will not stop us all these young people children coming with all their pranks and all their tricks will not stop us in Jesus name you know what there are some people in the other religion, other religion, you know what I mean. If they say they will marry a Christian, the father will say, hey, come on here. I'll prefer you dead that you go to marry a Christian. Am I right? Yeah. I say it, they are fully persuaded on error. And we are not fully persuaded on the truth. I say it, we can make you so cheap. That will say, okay, if that's your choice, and then you say you are taking dowry, then you call our members, then you are expecting me, even the GS, they will come to me and say, uh, Pastor, Daddy, my child is getting married. Mar getting married to where? Where is that? It's going to be in that other place, not here. This place is not good enough. You are preaching with us. You're teaching other people. This one is not good enough. All these brothers here that we have taught, they're not good enough to marry for your daughter. All these sisters who are here, they're not good enough for your son. And now we have some of our children, then celestial, they have marriage. Then the CSC, they have marriage. 
and then the children serve whom they have married. Some of them are in the redeemed they have married. And some of them are in the first core they have married. Some of them are in the assemblies of God they have married. Our children, while we're still alive, they're going and sleeping out of our hands. And we don't know where to find them again. You find them outside the way they dress. When, we, when they were born, some of these guests wouldn't put any holes in their ears. But you see them now, the holes in their nose and their ears, our children. Our children, our children. When are we going to redeem them? When are we going to bring them back? What shall we do? How will this church come together with real persuasion? And we'll say, Lord give me strength and give me health and make me today an all together persuaded parent that Lord my conviction I'll pass my conviction to my children I'll pass my conviction to my family and this strength that is going on as if there is no persuasion anywhere anymore oh Lord it will stop Point number three, the inflexibility and the perseverance. The inflexibility and the perseverance of a fully persuaded of an appointed preacher. I'm looking at, I'm looking at Judges chapter 11. Judges chapter 11. And in verse 35. And it came to pass when he saw her, he wrenched his clothes. And said, at last, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me, for I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. Tell me the rest. And I cannot go. That's, a, that's an altogether persuaded leader. Are you like that? will be like that. Let's rise up and pray and tell the Lord that time has come to be all together persuaded, all together persuaded, all together, all together completely persuaded and you're not going to allow anything anything, anything under the sun to shift you anything under the sun to sway you, anything under the sun to dilute the message the Lord has given you. You want to be all together persuaded. If you need to do it with tears with your sons and daughters, you do that. If you want to do it with pleading and kneeling down for your daughter, for your son, you do it. If you want to do it with some seriousness and affirmation, you do it. And you say, here is my persuasion. Here is where I stand. All together persuaded. All together persuaded. Your soul, your mind, your heart, your life, all together given unto the Lord. You stand, you'll abide, you will stay, you'll affirm what you believe. All together, all together, all together persuaded. As a Christian, an altogether persuaded Christian. As a convert, an altogether persuaded convert. As a pastor, an altogether persuaded pastor. As a preacher, an altogether persuaded preacher. As a parent, an altogether persuaded parent. Persuaded, persuaded, altogether persuaded. Make up your mind, make up your mind. Don't be like King Agrippa. Almost, almost, almost. Almost is but to fail. Almost will not avail. Sad, sad, the beat a whale. Almost, almost, almost but lost. Make up your mind. Take a decision. Be an all together persuaded Christian. An all together persuaded convert. An all together persuaded evangelist. That you believe what the Bible reveals. Salvation changes life. Be a real evangelist, a New Testament evangelist. Calling people to repentance and righteousness. All together persuaded evangelist. An altogether persuaded pastor. You're persuaded that you accept the righteousness be greater 
than the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, they will not be able to get to heaven. And that persuasion will affect your preaching, will affect your program, will affect your very output, what you do. Altogether persuaded pastor on the word of God. And altogether persuaded husband. Your wife wants to go to the mountain, to the valley. Wants to bring in only water, olive oil. If you are not together persuaded husband, you take your stand. You are the head of the home. You plead with her, you beg her, you pet her, you pray with her, and you do whatever can be done to keep her in the face. And all together persuaded wife that you not allow your husband just to go astray. To be led astray, led into sensuality, led into worldliness, led into the works of the flesh by women in the office. You watch over him. If you're an altogether persuaded wife, altogether persuaded parent, you believe, you believe, you believe, this is the only way to heaven. And you're fully persuaded, altogether persuaded in your heart. There'll be no compromise with your son. There'll be no compromise with your daughter. You'll not be covering your daughter. You'll not be covering up your son. All together persuaded. You'll join hands with the campus leaders and the leaders over these young people. And your son will know, your daughter will know that you're not siding evil. You're all together persuaded. All together persuaded missionary. You're not there for nationalistic purpose. You're there to preach the gospel. All together persuaded. All together. All together. All together persuaded. Real conviction. Real desire. Laying everything upon the altar. Not allowing anything whatever to tamper with the purity of this gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Do have the believers there? In Jesus' name we pray. Do I have some people here all together persuaded? And that you know this is the only way. Are you there? I said, are you there? Where are you? I can't see you. Am I just, am I a lone ranger? Am I the only one that just loves this Bible? You love this Bible? You love Jesus? You love heaven? Do you believe that what we are preaching is the truth? Have we deceived you? Do you think we are compromising? Do we think we are laying a heavy burden on you? Truly, truly, with all society in your heart. Do you believe that this is the way? Are you going to walk therein? Yeah. You have a Bible. Yeah. Where is it? You love that Bible? Yeah. You accept that Bible? Yeah. You want to read that Bible? Yeah. It will show you the way to heaven. Yeah. And your wife. And your children. Yeah. And your husband. You know what the other churches are doing with this Bible? They don't read it anymore. They just pick up one verse And they just encourage their people Nobody is preaching the holiness Do you accept this Bible? Will you give it to your children? Pass it on to your converts? Can you raise it up? Can you say this after me? Almighty God I come before you today I pledge my life again I pledge the totality of my personality again you have given me this word that will show me the way to heaven. Lord, I accept it. Lord, I believe it. Lord, I'm all together persuaded that this is the only way to heaven. Lord, I will stand. 
Lord, I will live by it. Lord, I will preach it. I will emphasize it in my family. My children will follow the same way. Lord, I pray all the grace I need, all the strength I need, all the power I need, all the commitment I need, all the courage I need to be able to stand by this word of God. Give it unto me and I will live by it. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name and glorify you. We know you are calling us to an altogether persuaded kind of Christianity. And Lord, we come to it this morning. Nothing will change it. Nothing will dilute it. Nothing will sway us. We will stand forever on this word in Jesus' name. Confirm it in our lives.